Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. I had done a third video, and I took it off. I, mean, I didn't upload it. This is my introductory notes to kind of uh, comments on Fletch's introduction to Ozark Refugium versus the Northwest Pacific States, readout states. Okay. Um, these are my notes here. This is the notes that I took from my first talk. And I'm not even going to go into it right now. I just wanted to say that's all of the notes I had. We're going to be a bit, a wee bit longer than that. I'll try to do this uh, in good order, in good time. What I did was I, I got, you know, I thought, got to thinking, well, I want to go back and do some screenshots. So I did. Um, so that's where we're at here. All right. So the next subject was salt and I am a polymath. So those of you who want a short video or want only one subject per video, just stop this one right now and head on to somewhere else where you can have a a Facebook meme type of a uh, approach to life because this is not it. So I just warning you, um, if you want to watch this, we're going to cover some different topics. I have been working for uh, since about 1980 to prepare for this point in time. We are not faced with a simple task. We're not faced with a, a single task. Um, we have a thousand maybe 2,000 different areas to prepare in, and that's what I've been trying to do, to provide information and to get as much done as possible ahead of time for the upcoming time of testing, however you want to call it. The end of the world as we know it, the balloon goes up, uh, shit hits a fan, I don't care. Tribulation, end times, hard times, things going south, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Okay, so salt is important. And the reason I mentioned it was the, one of the biggest things I wanted to say is that it is good for uh, humidity, uh, heat and humidity, especially combined heat and humidity, okay? Um, so this is a salt flats. I'm going to go into that. But if you'll take good sea salt, and I'm talking anything Portuguese sea salt, uh, you can get salt from Hawaii, you can get salt from the Sea of Cortez, which is the, uh, you used to be called um, the, uh, oh, God, yeah, blah, blah, blah. okay, forget that one. Um, you know, the Gulf of California there, go Baja. Uh, I, I have gotten in four semi-loads of sea salt from that area. Uh, you can import it yourself, you can find somebody that carries it, okay? Uh, Redmond salt, eh, you know, I don't r really like it that much. We never have used it because of the fact that we like our teeth the way they are and we don't really like eating sand and grit with our salt. Um, Great Celtic sea salt is what we've used for 30 some years, considered it like a hospital in a, in a bottle. It's uh, your multi-mineral complex. It's everything that it is need to replenish your electrolytes and keep your human battery, your body, which is a battery functioning properly. So that's, you can make Soleil with it. I'll have a little couple, couple shots here just as reminders. Pink Himalayan salt, of course, is awesome. So here is, what we're seeing here is, you see these reflections, beautiful reflections there. And every scene you see here is, is really not that good of a photograph. Uh, if you get on and do some real research here just on YouTube or photos, this is some of the most stunningly beautiful because when, when there's a lot of color in the clouds, purples and reds and oranges and, you know, uh, lightning. Oh, my gosh. Lightning strikes, multiple lightning strikes at the same time. Uh, we'll get into that. Lightning is uh, attracted to water. Water conducts electricity and salty water really conducts electricity well. That's where we're headed with a lot of this. This is not a simple matter. It's not easy. But you can see that just glass just uh, smooth as glass because this is level. There's maybe, I don't know, two, three inches of water. It's there. It's got nowhere to go. This place is 4,000 square miles. So I'm going to be dealing with a couple of things here. Yeah, you can get salt from here. Here's some people scooped up salt here. You can 
I'm sure they mine it or clean it. 10 billion tons of salt. The question often arises, how was it formed? It's a high plateau, no drainage outlets. The water from surrounding mountains once collated to form a whole lake, a giant lake. Um, now, where did the salt come from? Well, let's say a worldwide flood. It's a solar day, a uni, which means salt flats contain in a container. Okay, so um, it's the same thing again there. I'll pause that. I'm, I'm going to try to do this so that if you want to screenshot stuff, you can. I mean, I that's what this is. I just screenshot stuff. I have tried. People say get a slideshow deal. Well, I've tried. I've downloaded a bunch of them. I can't figure out how to make them work or with my tablet or whatever. Okay, so whatever. I do research. I can do research for hours and hours and hours on end, but to try to figure out how to upload something or remember how to do something with the computer, I don't know. I have a mental block. I are a techno tard. Laugh, insult, whatever. Um, I can do some things. I can't do other things. It'd be nice to have some help. Blah, blah, blah. Walking on water in Bolivia is one of the most unique things I have seen traveling around the world. The absolutely breathtaking walking on water illusion is something that is very unique to the salt flats found in Salar de Uyuni, Bolivia. Um, this is called the, the, the largest mirror of God on earth. Uh, we're heaven. You know, let's have another one here. See, now there's some cleaner looking stuff. So th this, these are mounds that have been scraped up to harvest it. Um, of course, uh, the resources found in the salt flat have a significant positive impact on the Bolivian economy. Yeah, I would think so. Lithium is one of the most important resources found in the salt. This is one of the biggest lithium deposits in the world, which is um, strange, bizarre, whatever. So the um, here's a point is Bonneville salt flats is flat, and I got a few pictures of that. Uh, this is flat. How did it get flat? Well, as an ocean was drying, it maintained its flatness. Water seeks its own level. This was water, and when it, as it, you know, condensed and condensed and condensed and condensed, evaporated, 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 it was level, just like it always was. So there is no curvature here. Is the point? Water seeks its own level. It is flat. Uh, in Lake Baikal, Russia, 395 miles long, freezes completely solid during the winter. Guess what? It's flat when it's frozen, and it's flat when it's water. And the reason it's flat when it turns to ice is because it was flat when it was water, when it was liquid. I mean, this is really pretty simple, really simple physics. So basically, you've been lied to. Uh, I didn't get a good shot of this, but biggest salt flat on Earth also called Biggest Mirror of God. Okay. And I think I had one here, world's largest, uh, 4,086 square miles. Wow. The, the uh, Bonneville salt flats are about 40 square miles. This is 100 times larger. And this is at very high altitude, 12,000 feet. Four-wheel drive, you got to have a, you know, you got to be able to breathe rarefied air. You know, if you're not used to it, you got to get used to that before you go up there. Okay. Perfect reflections from an even level flat surface. Even level flat surface you see over here. Marty Leeds 33, Flat Earth, the ultimate litmus test. Got a picture of it there. Anyway, um, just touching on that. The main thing was I wanted to touch on was salt. I'm going to go through a few pictures here. Um, and like, these are not, like I said, that one's pretty cool. But there are some fabulous pictures. I mean, uh, heaven on earth. Wow. You can see this guy standing here, see his reflection, and then off in the distance, here's a four-wheel drive vehicle with a bunch of people standing out there, all perfectly. Over here's another guy on the left there, perfectly reflected, just crystal clear. Okay, so here's another. This is Bonneville Salt Flats. Stand back, I'm going to try some science. A uh, guy wanted to build a solar system, so he did a perfect, two, perfectly two-scale model solar system with everything on stands, lights, and then he drove the... Um, with his headlights on, he did time-lapse photography of the uh, orbit, the circular orbits. So, and just, uh, I'm just touching on this, and I'm going to get off of this. I just wanted to, while well, I was, these salt flats are just amazing. Um, why can you go break the speed of sound on the Bonneville salt flats? Because it's flat, you know, you don't go off into space. 
Um, so that last, this is a seven mile Jupiter, is a seven mile orbit to scale orbit. Okay. All these in here is like, you know, Mercury, Mars, Earth, blah, blah, blah. So at seven miles, there should be 32 feet of drop. There is not any drop, period. It's flat. Okay. Enough of that. Gra Pink Himalayan salt is very highly um, energetic. This is the only... This is a video, and I'm going to show you where it came from. But this is a little pile of pink Himalayan salt, videotaped, videoed, that's, that's a pile of it, by a uh, gas discharge visualization camera, a GDV camera, gas discharge visualization. Basically, it takes the energy of something and it photographs it. And these are moving. This little pile, tiny little pile here, I'm guessing about an inch and a half diameter because the lens on this camera is only three inches. They put that on the camera and this is a continuous lightning storm. And you'll notice there's a, there's a center here and a center here and a center here. So it's almost the same exact configuration, uh, tetrahedral configuration as a uh, water molecule. Uh, three atoms offset a little bit. So I, I just thought that was weird. Electrophoton imaging Himalayan sea salt. Krishna Madapa is the uh, there is the thing there. Okay, so uh, you can make sole with it. S O L E. Look that up. Making sole sole replacement for my morning coffee. I know people who said the guy said that he's still alive. He was supposedly at Los Alamos, and uh, he he believes he's still alive because he started taking sole. So. You make a, put rock, rock, salt, rock, rock, salt in a jar, stir it up. You make a supersaturated solution, an SSS in chemical terms, supersaturated solution. And you um, take a teaspoon of that every day, teaspoon, tablespoon, and put it in a glass of water and drink it. All right. Um, on, now, the thing I touched on on my notes was um, the be where you're at idea, the... Um, uh, don't panic. Uh, the the idea that you know conspiracy people worried about everything. Um, Got to leave the United States. I'll I'll touch on that. So be where you are at. That's Papa Bear. That's that's him uh, with the uh, old peace pipe thing there, and he was adopted by the Sioux clan. But he was a search and rescue survival expert. Uh, for many years in Colorado, created the WISE, WISE, Wilderness Institute of Survival Education. I happened to take hunter safety under him because I wanted to do it in one day, not two. And I'm glad I did. I don't think my, I would be alive. I don't think my wife would be alive or any of my children would, have been, would exist. Uh, they would all be dead because we had two of them with us and we walked out of the Rockies in a snowstorm, in a blizzard, not a snowstorm, a sideways blizzard. And the fact that we refrained from panicking is what kept us alive. Okay. We dug for three hours and walked for six hours in a blizzard. So uh, be where you are at. Five simple words. Be where you are at. Have your head, have your mind where your body is. People get into a survival situation and they panic. I got to get something to eat. No, you're not going to starve to death for three weeks. You know, I need to get a fire started. Well, you need shelter first. You don't need water and you don't need food. You need to get shelter. Okay, in a in a most survival situations, whether that's desert or mountain, you need to get out of the elements and protect your body core temperature. This man saw many people free uh, freeze to death, technically uh, hypothermia, dead. However, they got that way with everything that they needed right there at hand to survive. Okay, so um, this is the video, Survival is Rule of Threes, Papa Bear's first rule, be where you're at. That's pretty cool. Over here on the top right here, Survival Winter, Survive Winter Kidney Wrap Trench Rocket Stove, just one of my videos. You might look that one up. Okay, so the thing with panicking is a lot of people are in panic mode virtually 24 hours a day. And I'm going to touch on that in the next video. I want to stop this and uh, keep them at 15 minutes.